This is the 2024 Mazda CX-5 Turbo Signature Edition. Today we're going to check out all the features on this classic family crossover, and then we're going to put it to the test on our off-road course. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The Mazda CX-5 was introduced way back in 2012. At the time, it was the very first Mazda vehicle to feature the new Kodo design language, as well as the Skyactiv line of powertrain tech. It was a new beginning for the car maker, and thankfully, it was also a huge success. In fact, just last year, Mazda sold 150,000 of these in North America, making it far and away the most popular Mazda you can buy today. That makes it both a blessing and a curse for Mazda. And the reason is simple. So while it's great for Mazda that the CX-5 continues to be popular, unfortunately the heir apparent, the all new CX-50, has only seen lackluster sales. Considering that the CX-50 is based on an all new platform and design language, that doesn't bode well for the brand moving forward. A base CX-5 with all wheel drive starts at just under $30,000. The model we have here is a top-level turbo signature trim. It features a turbocharged 2.5-liter engine, producing a peak 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque with a six-speed automatic transmission, Mazda's iActive all-wheel drive, and a top-shelf interior wrapped in Napa leather. Price of our test vehicle as you see it, $42,110, US dollars, including destination and an optional bumper guard in the back. EPA rates economy at 22 miles to the gallon in the city and 27 on the highway. Under the floor, a partial spare and a Bose subwoofer. You also get back here, a 12 volt socket. Let's try this for sleeping. Oh yeah, overall this is not bad. The floor is practically flat. I get a little room to maneuver in, and I fit. In the second row, I got plenty of room. I'm six foot one, legs torso proportionate. I fit great. Uh, this seat is where it would be if I were driving, so lots of room here. Now down here, you see I have vents, right? Well, where's all the other features? They hide them in the armrest for some reason. Uh, here I get three stages of heat on the outboard seats, plus I even get USB sockets hidden back here, two USB A's. Why didn't they just put them up here? Up front we get nicely sculpted seats, also wrapped in Napa leather, and I do get three stages of heat on them, which is great. Uh, steering wheel wrapped in leather as well. I really like Mazda's steering wheel designs, and that's what we get here. Uh, it also has a heat button. Nice. Now over here, we do have a standard throw PRND uh, controller for the transmission. And yes, this is a standard six speed automatic, no CVT here. Right next to that, I get a controller for sport, normal and off-road modes. Yes, we're gonna try the off-road mode a little bit later. Uh, what else do we get here? Oh yeah, this also has air conditioning in the seats. So they're both heated and cooled, which I guess Shouldn't be too much of a surprise considering this is the fully loaded version of the CX-5, but I am glad to see it. Right up here, we get a phone charger. And yeah, this actually supports wireless Apple CarPlay now, which is great to see. With wireless Apple CarPlay, you can use your fingers, which is great. It is a functional touchscreen. Um, however, with the Mazda system, once you jump out of CarPlay and you go to the Mazda system, well, at that point, yeah, you gotta use the dial down here. I know some people who own Mazdas are like, it's not a big deal, you learn to use it. Yeah, I don't like it. So if you don't like using knobs and you wanna touch your screen, just be aware that only works with CarPlay and Android Auto on this interface. You can't do it with the built-in. And the built-in, I think it just has a very confusing menu structure, like entertainment, you can go to your station, but there's no quick way to jump to your station unless you've already set it as a preset. And then it's not terribly clear how you make a favorite preset. It's just kind of a, it's streamlined to the point of being really confusing. And I still just, I, I just don't like it. I just don't think it's, 
it's unnecessarily confusing. The interior is really nice looking in this vehicle. Considering this vehicle first came out in 2012, they've done a remarkable job of updating it to being modern. I think I, big points to Mazda for that. So <laughs> today we are going to check out uh, this vehicle. I'm gonna hit the street first, see how it handles, see if it kind of lives up to modern expectations of handling. And then we're gonna take it back here to our off-road course and see how well it does uh, compared to other vehicles in the class. So let's buckle up and start driving. Of course, typical spring in the Pacific Northwest. It's sunny one moment, rains the next. Oh well, thankfully we have Mazda iActive all-wheel drive, and that is standard on the CX-5. They dropped the front-wheel drive models a little while ago. iActive all-wheel drive is a reactive system. That is, when cruising on the road, it'll normally be in front-wheel drive. Uh, when it detects that it needs to push power to the back, uh, it'll push up to 50% of available torque to the rear wheels, and it does it with a multi-plate clutch in the middle. And it, of course, uses a variety of sensors to constantly monitor what the road and wheels are doing, so the transfer of power is very quick, and it's something that, as a driver, you just don't need to think about. Now, one thing I love about this vehicle is the 2.5-liter turbo engine. It it's got enough punch for this size of crossover. It never feels slow. In fact, it feels pretty sporty, especially when you hit the curves. And that's because of the multi-link suspension in the back. This vehicle was developed back in the days when Mazda was working with Ford on a number of projects. And the Focus, which was considered one of the best handling hatchbacks of the time, had a multi-link suspension that is a little suspiciously similar to what you find in the CX-5. So that partnership with Ford is done, and now the CX-50, which is the all-new version of the CX-5, uh, it has a Torsen beam in the back, which is less expensive to manufacture, but also a little less fun. Because I gotta give it up to the CX-5. This thing, even 11 years into its production run, still handles pretty much better than any other crossover I've driven, outside of, you know, specialty marks. But man, it's a fun little crossover. And I do like how Mazda has basically kept with the times, uh, updating this every couple years to make it feel fresh here, even in 2024. Um, the infotainment system up there, it does look a little stuck on. Uh, I don't like the fact that it is both a combination of touch when you have, say, Apple CarPlay up, but then requires you to use the knob for the Mazda built-in system. And the Mazda built-in system is pretty clunky. So they could use some improvement there. Uh, we do have a heads-up display, and it's fine. I don't know, I, I don't really feel strongly about heads-up displays. Now we do get a variety of drive modes here. We have the system they call the MI Drive. Uh, flick it up and I get Sport, click it down a couple times, I get Off-Road. We'll test Off-Road in just a minute. For right now, let's kick it over to Sport. Now let's see what the paddles do. Down to three, up to four, three, four. Yeah, it shifts pretty quick. I mean, it's no dual clutch system, but I think that in this type of vehicle, this is, you know, about as good as you would expect. The suspension, I do feel, is a little on the stiff side, and it doesn't help that these seats are also fairly firm. Um, so if you're looking for a cushy driving experience, yeah, this isn't it. Let's see what this just feels like, just dropping the power. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into sport. Uh, it's in drive, and I'm just gonna mosh the throttle, and let's see what it does. And three, two, one, go. Takes a moment, but then boom! That turbo kicks in. Yay! <laughs> and we get up to 60 pretty quickly. Yeah, this is this is no slouch when it comes to zero to 60 performance. It's kind of surprising because it's, I mean, if I was ever use the term sheep and wolf's clothing, this vehicle is kind of like that. You look at a CX-5 and you're like, well, that's kind of a boring looking vehicle. Yeah, it looks nice, but it's like not exciting. But then you get behind the wheel and you're like, 
man, this thing handles really well. And then you hit the throttle and you're like, wow, that 2.5 liter turbo has guts. <laughs> this thing, it's cool. I wish I was as excited by a lot of Mazda's newer stuff, but I just feel like ooh, some of it should just be put back in the oven. This, however, is a refined, really well-rounded vehicle. And if you don't want to spend $42,000 for this one, you can get into a CX-5 even with the turbo for less. You might just have to forego, I don't know, the Napa leather and maybe a few other amenities like ventilated seats. Now let's see what we have in terms of economy here. Uh, my average MPGs are 19.4. It could be better, but you're not really going to get this much horsepower and, you know, be a winner in economy, you got to always trade one for the other, especially the way that I drive. I mean, I'm, I have not been kind. This does come mostly loaded uh, with a lot of the modern active safety features you would expect. It also has adaptive cruise with lane detection. Turn it on. I just turn on my regular cruise control. I hit set. I can set my gapping distance uh, as it detects vehicles in front of me that are going slower than my target and away we go. Now, if I want to, I can also hit an extra button here, which has a little steering wheel on it, and it'll do lane centering. Let's see, how centery will it be on this lane? See, can I? Yeah, it's doing a good job. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, so, oh, it lost its lanes. Okay, now it says it sees lanes and it has auto steer on. So I want to try to veer off to the side. It sees us and it tips us in, but it is not very aggressive at getting us back into that lane. So it's a very subtle system, which if you like to drive and you want to have your, you know, focus 100% on driving all the time, this is a good system. If you want a little bit more assist, other vehicles, Toyota, Subaru, other things in this class, uh, they all offer a more advanced lane centering system, uh, which again, you can also turn on and off if you don't want to use it, you don't have to, you never do in any of these vehicles. Yeah, so as far as street driving in 2024, this CX-5 is still, I think, a great buy. It is just such a nicely well-rounded, developed, <laughs> I said it was well-rounded, it is kind of like an egg, isn't it? Anyway, it's a well-rounded, fun-to-drive little crossover, and I think that, you know, it's, it's good. <laughs> now, in terms of looks, I do prefer the way that the CX-50 looks. Uh, I just think it kind of looks a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more off-roady, which is kind of my thing. So now that we looked at the on-road performance of this vehicle, I think it's safe to say the CX-5 is still a good choice in 2024. It drives great. I think the Kodo design just looked best on this vehicle. And so that looks great. Um, yeah, I mean, the only real downside is you have a little bit of constraint in the back. It doesn't have as much cargo space as other vehicles in the class. Uh, it doesn't have that rugged off-road look, which is so trendy right now. But if you just want to cross over, that's great to drive on the street. You know, this is one you should consider. But how well does it do off-road? We're about to find out as we take this onto our Peninsula Proving Grounds to see how well it shifts power, not just front to back, but also side to side. For the first test, I'm going to see how well this shifts power front to back. And I'm going to do that by basically just moshing the throttle on a gravel surface. Uh, so, normally a car will have a button to disable traction control. I don't see that here. So I think what they've done is they've tied it into the MI drive system for the off-road mode. Because several years ago with the CX-5, it didn't have an off-road mode, but if you turned off traction control, that basically was the off-road mode. It would actually engage a special off-road program. They just didn't call it off-road mode. It was kind of weird. Anyway, I do believe that that's what we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead, put it in drive, I'm in off-road mode, and now let's just hit the throttle and see what it does. Three, two, one, floor it. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo. Oh yeah, that's power out the back. Nice. It did take a minute to get going, but I think the result is actually pretty good. It definitely was pushing power to the back. 
Right, so this next section is what we call the fun forest. It's our easy off-road course. The point here is that it's gonna remove traction off of individual wheels, which will then require the vehicle to shift power from one side to the other to make it through. Uh, this emulates trail roads, and in a way, it also sees how it would respond in snow and ice, uh, since that's also a grip challenge situation. Uh, now I'm in off-road mode. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it on there, putting it in drive. There's really nothing else to do. Now these are all season radials, <laughs> just a normal set of Toyos, so they're really not designed for dirt. Uh, but if you watch closely, you can see what's gonna be a situation where we need more tire grip and a situation where power isn't getting shifted. If the wheel is spinning and it's contacted with the dirt and it's not moving forward, that would indicate the need of a better tire. However, like this, we're spinning because those two wheels don't have, they're not touching the ground. In this case, it's a matter of shifting power around. Oh, doesn't want to do it. It's not shifting enough power. Oh, a little bit more, a little bit more. Are we going to get through it? Ah, oh, that was a lot of work. But we did finally get through. So, points to the CX-5. Okay, now we're going to dip that driver's side front wheel into another hole, which means that the passenger rear wheel is going to lift. Not a big deal till we try to drive out. At which point, my passenger front wheel lifts. Oh, those are parking sensors. Let's turn those off. Oh, and a good point. I can actually use the camera system here as a trail cam, which is pretty cool. And again, I'm just going to add throttle, and you will see that the wheels will be braking on the corners where it's trying to shift that power from the wheel that's in the air to the other side of the axle and it does it. It's a little jerky and I feel like it's not shifting as much power as I would like but the system does do the job. Continue down into the ditch lifting that driver left wheel but at this point I'm going to now have to climb out and the problem here is that I've now lost traction on my passenger rear and driver front. So how well can we climb out of this? It's, it's working. It's working real hard and it gets us through. Okay. Well, I think overall that power shift system seems to work okay. Uh, now let's see if we're going to grind when we do the exit here and then we'll do the locks. On this exit, you typically need about eight inches of ground clearance to avoid rubbing. Let's listen. Ooh, very slight rubbing. Uh, this has seven and a half inches. But you know, I think, I think we'll be okay for the logs. Yeah, let's give the logs a try. See what it does. I mean, they have an off-road mode. Might as well use it, right? On the logs here, I'm gonna have to be really careful that I don't set the vehicle down too fast because at that point we might hit and we don't wanna hit hard if we do. Um, I am a little concerned about the overhang in the front because the approach angle ain't great on this thing. So uh, let's just go ahead and do it. Now I am in off-road mode still. I'm going to be listening for any dings, nicks, or wax. Kind of crawl over here. Oh, turn my camera back on. Line it up with the logs. Here's the big one. Oh, oh, oh. oh. So even in off-road mode, the crawl ratio is simply not great, so I end up with like nothing, 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 and then I have all the power, which makes me surge. But I'm trying to just do very slow crawling here. But so far, I haven't hit anything, so that's a good sign. This last log. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, pretty good. Now we're gonna exit through the sand pit. Although it's a little wet today, so sand pit pie isn't gonna be that hard. Watch that tree. And in we go. No rubbing, that's good. Out. Okay. Overall, I think that the CS5 did a really good job. I mean, it's great to drive on pavement on normal streets. And when you hit the trail, you can get to that trailhead if the road isn't too difficult. I really felt that, like in the deadlift section where I first entered the fun forest, it struggled more than it probably should have. It couldn't really put enough power down to lift the vehicle up. I had to use a little momentum uh, to get that done. But 
you know, for the target audience, I think this thing is actually still really great. Yeah, even in 2024. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos, make a few. Hope you enjoy them.